Hey everybody, my name is Danielle and this is Chatter Out Loud. Thank you so much for joining me. Your presence is very much appreciated. So welcome or welcome back. I wanted to share an update on Big Brother Season 24, BB24. So if you're interested, keep listening. Okay, you guys, we've had another eviction under our belt and Daniel is out. I'm happy he's out. I look forward to his exit interviews. Um, Tonight when we saw him sit with Julie after he was evicted, he seemed a little confident, a little cocky, that he knew the game. He knew what was going on. He called the other house guests clowns. He seemed like he was unbothered, but he was anything but that. Um, Daniel was very emotional in his last (laughs) days in the house um he had no read on the game uh and for someone who has tried 10 years to be on the game and to perform this way it was terrible he had a terrible game um when I first saw him in the interviews you know when they interviewed the house guests I thought oh man he's a super fan he he loves the game um he's one to look out for and quickly with the whole Paloma nonsense and him winning the first HOH it just went downhill from there Um, Daniel's entire focus um, in terms of his game was hating Taylor and I really believe that that is really what tanked his game he was so hell-bent and focused on Taylor um, he forgot to play his own game right and his obsession with Paloma is kind of like weird to be honest um it kind of reminds me of that season when Yvette I think that was her name it's the season that Maggie won um and Yvette was so obsessed with Cappy 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 um and he was out of the house really early but she kept saying it for the rest of the season I can't wait to see him and stuff like that. Maggie actually used that as part of her strategy to say to Yvette, um, I think she won a competition or HOH or something. She said, well, what would Cappy do? And I thought, oh, wow. But anyway, the, the season that Maggie won, Yvette was so obsessed with Cappy. And this is the kind of vibe that I'm getting from Daniel and this uh, whole obsession with Paloma. Um, I can't wait to go party with her. That's all I want to see her and Nicole, like, Paloma quit the game um, because she was so uh, she couldn't handle the pressure of them telling her about her behavior and so she just quit and you know we'd like to forget her Daniel but he kept bringing her up bringing her up bringing her up Um, it it was a little obsessive in my opinion and um, I I wonder if he'll ever meet with her (laughs) but we'll see anyway Daniel is gone and and would you look at all of that that has happened in the past five weeks Paloma was the catalyst of the tale of hate train we all saw it she couldn't deal with the pressure of being warned about her behavior and so she quit the game uh Pooch who I found to be a little obnoxious not a little a lot obnoxious um he was so arrogant he volunteered to go on the block yeah we got to get Taylor out and he was so confident and cocky volunteered to go on the block rookie move well not rookie not a rookie move because not all rookies make this move it was a dumb move um he got on the block he got voted out then miss amira who was the mastermind of getting pooch out she i thought she had potential to play well in the game but she's just so unlikable and she herself was cocky confident on the block yeah I got the votes whatever she's gone we all saw Nicole go last week this week ended with Daniel um the first five the pre-jury and it's so funny because all of them were so hell-bent on Taylor and it's just so funny I'd wonder if they would change their strategy at all to focus on strategizing and playing a game opposed to hating personally hating someone in the game and that's their only focus Um, but they all blew their chance at being on big brother because of the hate they had for taylor and it's so unfortunate for them right all right uh we learned tonight or the rest of the house guests learned that they are they are now jurors right so they all made jury um but let me back up for for a moment 
I wanted to talk a little bit about the goodbye messages, right? To Daniel, um, Michael, him with the props in the GR, in the DR. Um, I, I, it was a great goodbye message, right? The, the two pieces of bread and him looking with the eye through the, the, the bread and saying, you know, when I see you, it's an idiot sandwich or some, something to that effect. That was a brilliant line. I found it to be entertaining. Um, but it's so fascinating because I'm wondering like when they are called to the DR and you see him walking into the DR with a loaf of bread, like, is anyone suspicious? Like, what is he doing with bread? <laughs> I just found it like he brought props to the DR. Like he's bringing bread to the DR just for this goodbye message. Like I know production is like supporting this. I wonder if they gave him that idea, but it was entertaining. But I often wonder, like if you see him going to the DR and you see them going in with like bread, like, I wonder what's going through the other house guest mind. Like, what what are you doing with bread? <laughs> um, Kyle, him touting that he formed the leftovers. We can do without that. Um, this is like the second or third week in the row now that we've heard Kyle mention this in his goodbye messages. Um, it's giving me big D vibes, to be honest. Um, last year, BB23, big D would have you believe that he formed the cookout. Um, we all know this is a lie or an untruth, right? Um, it was an understanding that those six players had amongst one another saying they'll keep each other's back, watch each other's back. It was almost kind of cultural thing. I got your back. We'll watch out for each other. Xavier threw out the name. Yeah. Like the cookout, it was code, right? They all knew what that meant. And they all, they didn't even have all of the players in the cookout. (laughs) In the beginning, it kind of evolved into, okay, there's a greater thing we can do here. Um, Anyway, the vibes it's giving me is that Kyle is now going around saying he formed this and he's the mastermind. He First of all, he needs to stop saying he's a mastermind. He is no mastermind, number one. Number two, I found it interesting or find it interesting that they keep uh, excluding Joseph from these edits in terms of the strategy that's going on within the leftover Alliance. Right. Don't we think Joseph is the one who's really strategizing? Do you give Kyle that credit? I mean, is he that smart? Uh, I'm not sure. Kyle is going around the house thinking that the black players are creating a cookout 2.0. Uh, that alone is ignorant. Number one. Um, and it's a bad read. There is no cookout 2.0. Be clear, the six players that formed the cookout last season in BB23, thank God none of the, well, with the exception of Taylor, none of the other folks um, were cast last year because they could never be in the cookout, uh, cookout, period. They couldn't be in the cookout, not with the way they talk about Taylor. It's just, I don't even want to get started. Kyle is fixated on there being a cookout 2.0. His reasoning is just unfounded. It's showing a racial bias. Um, And it's not being shown or or, on the edited uh, episodes we see. And I, I would like to see that so all the casuals can see how ignorant and how silly Kyle, Kyle, how, how he looks right now. Um, he is so hell bent that they're all the black players are playing together and they got to get him out. So he wants to create a white alliance, you know, so he can get the other. It's just, I cannot. I just want Kyle to lay off saying he's a mastermind. He is no mastermind. Let's get Joseph in the edits, right? And for the record, I just want to say BB23, Big D was not the mastermind of the cookout alliance. Tiffany Mitchell was. <clears throat> Tiffany Mitchell was the mastermind and built that strategy for the final six, the cookout to get to the final six. That was Tiffany Mitchell, not big D, not X, not Kai. Okay. All right. And and no need to try to argue against that. There is no argument against it. Tiffany is the mastermind behind the cookout BB 23 full stop. All right. Moving along. Um, and don't let me, yeah, I already said Terrence. He, he couldn't be a part of the cookout. Terrence is, is weak. Terrence has a weak game. 
Um, and I think someone sent me a comment or made a comment like, how come everyone's giving Terrence a pass? No one's giving Terrence a pass. I haven't given Terrence a pass. My last, um, and I don't think it was directed towards me. I just think they're saying that in general. Like, how come no one's bringing this up? Well, over the past week, we have seen a lot of people lighten up Terrence uh, on BB Twitter with his disgusting comments. Um, him and Daniel this past week, I mean, they sound like miserable men and incels but Terrence is married so can he be an incel right but they sound so miserable and so upset and unhappy and angry and so jealous of Taylor it's so pathetic um but Terrence he I still maintain he's weak in the game he has no strategy him bouncing around and just trying to just the way he's trying to fit in and the cursing and and then I saw this other video with him talking about crock, crock pot P word and just the comment about Taylor being a hole on the stroll. It's just, I, I don't like it. It doesn't show him in a good light. What he's presenting to us, it doesn't, um, it's not flattering for him. It's kind of an embarrassment. He has a wife and he has daughters. And I just, I'm so confused by what what he's doing when he talks about tail like that is disgusting to me um and he'll be lit up on twitter too when he gets out of the house but i'm curious to see how he's going to play this next week right who is he going to talk to now uh daniel's not there that was his boy he gave him a vote you know and he already is telling Turner in the, in the room as they're um you know washing up from the uh the wall comp He's already telling Turner, like, I had to, Daniel had no one else to talk to. He's crazy. You know, he's a crazy boy, stuff like that. He's already giving justification of why he was hanging around Daniel. But can you justify why you're talking about Taylor like that? No, you can't. They're so obsessed with her. And that's the mistake I think all of them have made in terms of why Paloma quit, why Pooch is gone, Amira, Nicole, now Daniel, the rest of the girls, how they have lost power with the leftovers, the leftovers being formed, right? All of this is surrounding Taylor, right? And there's no fault of her own. She just entered and walked into the house. <laughs> That's all she did was show up. And the hate, the jealousy, all of this is surrounding them. Yeah, surround everything surrounding Taylor. That's all they focused on versus focusing on a strategy and how they can excel in the game. They were so hell-bent on getting her out. The girl is now in jury and now she's the new HOH. I mean, <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. Um, and I wonder if all the, pre the pre-jurors now, I wonder if they are thinking to themselves now that they're out of the house <clears throat> and they've heard things online and been interviewed. I wonder if they would come back into the house and re-strategize in terms of would they focus so much on one person right <coughs> excuse me I mean they put so much energy and they still do it it's still happening in the house right there's so much energy with Taylor I mean it just it's unbelievable and all she's doing is just showing up she's not dulling her dimming her light she's just showing up and it's just so they're so bothered by it it's so the insecurity and the jealousy is just unreal. And that's why I don't like the cast. I say this every episode. I don't like the cast except Taylor. These people are a joke. All right. Let me just move on. I'm already getting into 15 minutes. Um, I wanted to talk about the wall comp. It was this week's HOH. Jasmine was out, the first one out, really early. I think, did we make commercial break? I mean, she was just out. She jumped down. Didn't seem like she tried. Whatever, Jasmine. Uh, Brittany was next, but at least Brittany tried. And by the way, when Brittany fell, she looked so worried. It was that same look she had the whole time that first week when she was in the backstage thing. Um, she looks worried, concerned, and paranoid. Now, as people began to fall off the wall and Taylor wound up winning, um, she her face shifted a little bit. But Brittany just looks so scary. It's, it's just so strange. The girl is in an alliance. She has allies in the game. 
and yet she still is so paranoid. I just don't understand it. And that's an insecurity as well. I can't, I can't stand it. Um, and now with the festy bestie twist no longer in play, I know she's freaking out because she already didn't feel insulated because they were the, her and Michael were the only pair that didn't have a non leftover and they were like so worried and trying to get, you know, uh, keep Indy and Alyssa on the block and have one of them join their team. So they'd be insulated. That's all she talked about on the live feeds and just running around the house, her and Michael is just, and I found it interesting that all this week that her and Michael talk to each other a lot. I mean, their social games are, I'm kind of putting those in question because they're not even, I mean, they, Michael is winning competitions. Yes. But his social game is kind of like falling short. He's only talking to Brittany. Why just Brittany, you know? Uh, and Brittany, her social game is not good at all. <laughs> anyway, I'm all over the place. Okay. Let me get back to the wall comp. The wall comp it was great. We, we as BB fans, we love this. We saw this. Uh, Taylor one, she was not moving or budging on that wall. I believe she could have stayed on that wall all night. They all would have fell. Oh, they all did. And she didn't even get off the wall after she, after they all fell. She's just like, did everyone fall? And then Michael had to tell her you won. And she just, she fell. She was so emotional. We were all crying. We were all exciting. I mean, excited and cheering. At least that's what I saw on Twitter, right? That's what's what's happening in my head. I know during the competition, I was saying, fall, Indy. (laughs) I was also saying, fall, Kyle, fall, Alyssa. Like, (laughs) and if you haven't seen it yet or you don't watch the live feeds, when you see it air, uh, you'll probably, if you're not a Taylor hater, you would probably, probably be saying the same thing. Like, fall, fall, fall. So it was just gratifying to see them fall one by one by one. And she, meaning Taylor, outlasted all of them and she is the new hoh um another thing julie told us tonight about another twist where they'll be playing they the house guests will be playing in parallel like parallel games so there'll be two groups um they won't have any interaction with each other each group won't have interaction with the other group at all during the week they'll be playing parallel games and then two people one from each group will be put up on the block i believe that's what she said so i'm interested to see how this twist is going to work and how will the house guests um be separated right how do they not interact are they going to be in in different parts of the house at different times or stuff so i'm interested to see this twist um i don't believe we had this type of twist before but so I mean, I'm very, very much interested to see that. Um, I hope whatever this twist is and how it works, it doesn't mess up Taylor's HOH week. <laughs> I'm wishing Taylor a smart HOH week. Um, I am hope it's filled with a lot of good strategy, um, uh, power moves, and moves that will keep her secure in the game and, and um, keeping, her, keeping her in the game a lot longer right getting her to the end um it's still a long game to play but i'm hoping she has a good hoh and that she makes a smart move not emotional a smart move um i'm so stoked that she won it and look at that you know daniel gets voted out (laughs) taylor wins hoh and i also found during the vote i found it interesting how production um organized Taylor being that vote so after she voted Julie says it's official (laughs) Daniel will be leaving the house tonight you know so that was nice and when they go back and watch the episodes or at least when Taylor goes back and watch the episode she'll be able to see that um it's kind of like she put the nail in the coffin Daniel's coffin um figuratively of course so that was nice to see. Um, so overall, I think we had a nice, a great night of Big Brother. We saw Daniel voted out. We saw his face drop when Julie told him that the leftovers were formed as a result of his actions in the bathroom against Taylor. Yeah, Daniel was like so confident and I know the game. And as a fan, he kept touting all that nonsense. And then Julie said, yeah, the leftovers were started because of what happened, what you did to Taylor. And he's like, oh oh yeah he had pause there so i'm interested to see his exit interviews just to see how he'll spin it and if anything comes comes about it um 
Uh, I like the fact that Julie shared game play and the alliance with Pooch, Amira, Nicole, and Daniel, because that means they won't be coming back into the house, <laughs> right? So she revealed gameplay, she revealed strategy, she revealed an alliance, and normally when she does that, that means that person's not coming back. So thank goodness. Uh, all the rest of the house guests have made jury. Uh, Julie told them that. And um, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. A spider just like crossed my path and I'm like, oh my God. Um, now I'm so distracted. Um, Taylor had a good goodbye message. Uh, also production, how much time are we going to give this no man's between Kyle and Alyssa? No one cares. Um, I'm, I'm over it. A lot of people are over it. Please let's just leave it alone. We're tired of seeing Kyle and Alyssa in the no man's. And can we stop with the jag- uh, the Jasmine and the Muffin Gate? No one cares about that either. Um, let's show Joseph, uh, give Joseph more edits in terms of strategy and his plans and how he's um, strategized in terms of the leftovers in their gameplay. We all want to see that. I'm interested to see how the girls will act this week with Taylor. Um, do you think it'll change? I don't think so. They scrutinize everything Taylor says and does. This week will be no different. Um, a lot of fakeness going on with the with the with everyone in the house against Taylor. People, a lot of fake people in the house. Um, what else do I want to say? I think that's it. I'm happy Taylor won. She's the new H O H. I'm. It's going to be a full week with the Festy Bestie twist gone and the new twist with the parallel games and the two groups not interacting, leading into a double eviction next week. Um, So all of this is going to be interesting to watch and I am here for it. Um, So what do you think of Taylor being the new HOH? You have to leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. All right. And that's all I have. I'd love for you to like, share, follow and subscribe, all of which will help my channel grow. So thank you in advance. All right. My name is Danielle and you're listening to Chatter Out Loud. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I appreciate your support. And that's all I have. Thanks again for listening and I'll talk to you next time.